Welcome to Good Roar, and I am Rory. Fancy meeting you here. It's time for some more Shipbreaker on, uh, we're doing it on Twitch today. Just, just for fun there. Giving it a try. They updated the game. So, I lost, I lost my previous progress. Uh, which, kind of unfortunate. But, they're, I mean, they're still working on it, and w which is cool. Uh, but what, what I'm going to do, though, is I got to start over again anyway, so I figured I might as well today. So we're going to go into a standard shift. I was hoping to do the 30 limited lives, but, uh, you know. Early access and all that. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let's just uh, get rid of me for a second. If you're not familiar with Shipbreaker, basically you're busting up ships in a post-apocalyptic world for a company that charges you for absolutely everything. So if you're familiar with uh, Ready Player One, it's basically IOI. That's basically what it is. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just move me for a second here. Just a second, just a second, just a second. I'll put, uh, put me over here for a minute, I guess. I'll just do it over here. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay. So basically, like every other dystopian, uh, you know, dystopian company out there that is going to uh, basically hold their people as working slaves. I have to choose it. That that sound that that's important. The screaming and pain. That's important with a. Uh, uh, I'll go with uh, plastic free. I think that's a good a good food choice. Uh, agree to each statement. I have no criminal record in uh, in the Terran or Martian zones. Yes, I don't think I do. I am not a working. I am not a member of or have never been associated with a workers' union. That is also true. I have completed my annual medical exam and have been cleared of having McCullough's lung. I don't know what that is, but okay. I have no commercial or real estate interests on Luna in the asteroid belt or in, I, I don't know what any of that is or this, the, the nation state of Arizona. <laughs> okay. I will bring a positive attitude and problem solving mindset to work every day. Sounds unlikely, but okay. I understand the, and accept the health risks associated with long-term exposure to a Vander Walls field. Uh, sure. I will vote for <laughs> Chancellor Chan Zung in the Pan American Senate election. Okay. Freedom of vote. That's gone. Uh, I'm going to skip the training because I've done it before, but I would highly recommend it if you've not played Shipbreaker previous to this. Okay. So let's, uh, let's just sign that. Away we go. You gotta get the intro in here. Music's fantastic, by the way. One of my favorite parts of the game. What's cool is that the ship that we're traveling on, we, we bust up those ships. It's pretty neat.
Fantastic intro. I love it. Love it. All right. So let me uh, adjust yonder sound a little bit. Oh, hello. Your automated will now begin. This this gets a little uh, this gets a little grim at times. That's exactly what's happening. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Oh, I'm so, so happy. Hmm. Yeah. Not going to happen. I believe you. Every word of it. Hmm. Ever work. One day you too. Oh. Very nice. Isn't it though? I want a fresh start. Now, this is gruesome for a minute, so if you, uh, if you're a little squeamish, then turn down your volume for a second. Largely tolerable. Didn't mention that in the uh, the video. That sounded good. Just a just a dentist visit, right? Right. Largely, uh, largely painless, I guess. Congratulations! It is now safe to die. Ha! <sighs> okay. So basically... Oh, oh, hold on. Here's the bill. Here's the bill. Oh! Oh, you didn't, you didn't mention that! Did you? Goodness. Just keep just keep ticking away. Hold the thumb scanner to confirm proceed. So basically what happened is we got a job. And in getting that job, they charged us for everything in order to get there. And we have to work it off. Welcome to Lynx. And their EverWork program. Because what you know what you're gonna do? Pay off a billion and a half dollars. That's what you, or a billion, 1.2 billion, not a billion and a half. But you pay for everything all the time. It's a scam. It is a scam. And I walked right into it. Right in there. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Just a game, right? Just a game. Didn't mention that in the introduction video, though, eh? Did they? No? Didn't think so. Hello. Yay. Thanks. 
So we're going to start with uh, ma Mackerel. There's the ship type. Uh, they have light cargo models and station hoppers. So you know, light cargoes will have boxes and, and components and so on. And station hoppers, they tend to have like screens and, and uh, chairs and so on. Hazard level two. Lynx is committed to ensuring shipbreakers are exposed to hazard levels in ships only according to their proficiency level. And median estimated emotional adjustment time should death occur related to these hazards. So you can die. You can die because they backed up your genetic material and they could just, you know, repop you out as another clone. But you pay every time you die. So it takes longer to pay off your debt. All right. Oh, I dubbed the shipbreaker. We got a new sticker. Very nice. We can put stickers on our equipment that we have to pay for to repair. And anyway, you get the idea, right? Minimum payments are due by 10 a.m. Solar Standard Time each day. Failure to pay on time is considered a breach of contract. Thank you for your hard work and cooperation. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, oh, this is this is all new. This is all new. So. Uh, this is all very new. Posters confirm. Okay. Employee terminal. Oh my goodness. Bed. Ah, look at that. Like you can collect posters on the ships and you have been able to for a while, but that's pretty, it's pretty cool. So now there's like a 3d, uh, habitat workstation, living space, start shift. Okay. Uh, living space. Uh, which kind of cool is you see all like the. You see these boxes and things like that. Like you can collect those, and you'll find like the snacks and business that's on that's in here. You can sort those are sort of floating around in the ship and stuff. Um, I love how it's all like live, laugh, salvage, work. That's pretty much it. All right. Um, let's check out the employee terminal. I don't know. It's oh messages. Okay. So before this just used to be a menu, right? I guess they've turned it into a, like a, a living space that you could manage yourself and so on, which is pretty cool. Um. Oh. So Weaver is kind of like the veteran, uh, the veteran guy that's their supervisor or whatever that's been here forever. All right, let's start the shift. So with the, uh, you'll be given like the depending on your ship grade, like there's the ship grade one, ship grade two. We we did we skipped the intro, so we're just gonna go to two, but it's very similar. And I'm going to choose, uh, let's go with, we got a light, two light cargoes and two station hoppers. It'll show you the total value available from the ship on the side. So you can see we owe $1.2 billion and this one ship has a potential value of 1.8 million. That's a lot of ships. Although the, the further you go along, the bigger the ships get, the more expensive the components get. So you get more, more pay for more risk basically with the bigger ships start to involve fuel and like uh, bigger reactors, but the puzzles get more more difficult. So you have a grappler. Oh, let me turn on my light. You have a grapple that allows you to either pull yourself towards stuff or grapple and pull things. So you see like, it says barge above antenna there. So that's the barge down there. That's where you're collecting valuable goods. Processor is semi-valuable. And then the furnace is just like you're burning up metal and things like that. So we can also take a look at the ship this way. And you can see uh, you can see the compartments and the, the red the red blocks. They're not green because it's not pressurized. But if it was green, it would be pressurized. And you got to handle pressure and so on and so forth. But with the, with the ship itself... Um, we're going to be cutting stuff up. So this is the cutter. You got the cutter and you got the stinger, which is a direct beam. Uh, we don't, I don't, we don't have any tethers yet, so I can't do that. So basically now we just push stuff into the places that we want to send it, which is a lot slower than eventually. Eventually we use tethers and tethers. We can just sort of say, attach a tether to where we want it to go and it'll pull in that direction. But now we have to, 
We have to sort of guide things. There we go. Let's go in the ship, take a look. Actually, since it's not pressurized, fun fun fact, since it's not pressurized, we can cut into the ship where we have cut points. You see how like my see how here the the bar is is white? The bar of my cutter is white, but if I go over a cut point, it goes red. So then I can I know that that's a place I can cut. So this is also going to the barge. There we go. So normally you'd have to go through the airlock, make sure the pressure is all all cool and everything. Okay, this this ship has a lot of storage. But you'll see the cut point difference, the little yellow sort of band things there. So basically I'm going to try and uh, hack open the ship and we're going to sort the components into where, where they are to go. Now, I don't know if you're interested in this kind of thing, but I I liked uh, baseball cards and hockey cards when I was a kid, and I really like sorting them. So I don't know, maybe it's a something I did as a youth that I now enjoy, but uh, for some reason, I find uh, sorting really calming <laughs> in this regard, in this way. Like, obviously, it's a video game, and I enjoy a video game. So being able to solve the puzzle of the ship, sort the things in the proper places, and uh, you know, feel like you may have achieved something or other, other than helping a dystopian corporation take advantage of you as a worker. You know, it's that kind of that kind of that kind of thing. I enjoy it. it there's other games that I enjoy that are more fast paced, but uh, and this one can be fast paced. There's a race mode to see if you can cut up a ship accurately and with the most value in the shortest amount of time. And uh, there's other there's other streamers that play this game. That, that do that kind of thing. Oh, oh, I destroyed one of the cargo. See? One of the risks is, like, if you're not cutting, if you're cutting too fast and too, uh, and too, like, without without regard, you have a chance of, uh, you have a chance of, of burning stuff up that would have been valuable cargo. So you see at the top bar of the, of the, UI there. It shows the value of what I've of salvaged so far, and at the very end, there's a little red bit, and that's the stuff that I've either sorted incorrectly or I've burned up. And that was that that uh, cargo pack that I just uh, I just messed up. Actually, let's get the bottom floor out of here so we can uh, so we can push stuff down instead of having to pull it out the top. This part's kind of slow, like the without before we get tethers. Tethers makes the world a difference. But uh, I gotta go. I gotta get to level four before I can do the uh, the other mode. And I gotta. I can show you the. I'll show you the equipment after this one. But they really wanted us to get started in in uh, tearing up the ship. The other thing we have to worry about: we have fuel to operate our rockets. We have uh, and we have oxygen to you know not die. And guess what? You can buy those at the at the uh, the hab there for a low low fee. Isn't that fun? All right, this goes in the processor. Let's get up here. It's coming out. Yeah. Is that a light? I think it is. There we go. All right. Yeah, so our oxygen's getting low, and you'll notice the risk music starts. Now, one of the one of the fun tips about this thing is you can use your you can use your grappler to pull yourself around, especially at the start when you're well at any time. You can get going with this thing, but uh, when your jets are kind of slow. So we're going to get some more oxygen. We don't need to get any more fuel. You also have to buy repair kits and patch kits. Patch kits are just in case you bump into something a little too uh, fervently and crack up your helmet. That's uh, That'll help you out there. The uh, And of course, your equipment wears down and you have to pay for repair kits. So like everything in the game, everything costs money. And uh, Lynx makes all, the, makes all the cash out of it. You know... You know who's benefiting from this arrangement. Alright, 
All right. He's talking about these things right here. These are these are fuel tanks. So let's let's separate that. So you don't want to cut up those. That that would be bad. The back of the ship is a big big piece. So we'll see if we can uh push it that way. Get some get some motivation going there. Oh, it bumped off something. Got an antenna. This again, uh, one when we have tethers, it will be easier to move this kind of thing, but we just want to get it on the right side of this uh edge here. Are you gonna go? There you go. Okay, we got it. We got it. All right. Airlocks have a few components. There's the airlock inside this part. See how it says barge. So you wanna you wanna sort of crack it like an egg. It's got a few cut points to to do that. But you don't want to ruin it. That's the other, the other side of it. So I'm just going to get all the cut points done on the edge here, and you'll you'll find that a lot of the activities are very much the same when you're going through ships. But the order in which you do them and the hazards that may exist on from one ship to another are going to be different. So you might be like, oh, I'm just going to chop this up here, this up, this up, and then push it out. No, it's the same thing. But then you hit an electrical line, or you hit uh, some gas or like or some fuel, something like that that exists in a place where you didn't expect it, and all of a sudden you have either an implosion or explosion or a reactor overload or a whole bunch of stuff. Let's get that, and it's very granular. You notice like even the door handle is goes to the barge. This goes to the barge. The panel goes over to the the panel goes over to the processor. So. It can get, uh, it can get, again, it can get pretty, as granular as you want to get. I didn't tend to do the lights too much until I watched another uh, Twitch streamer, and he was pulling the lights off because he does the race stuff, and in the race, you're trying to get, you're trying to get as much as you can as fast as you can, and if the the lights go to the barge, and the uh, the panel goes to the processor, that's, uh, those are two different, two different revenue streams, essentially. And you'll lose it if you put it to the wrong one, even though it's just a light. All right, let's concentrate on the big stuff. It's gonna go down there. Good, we got goal number two. Let's see if we can get goal number three. It used to be uh, when you when they first started the game, you were given a, a work order, and it would be like get ex get these components here, there, and everywhere, and they just sort of changed it into a value. A value thing. Also, you notice that sound. My uh, my my uh, cutter was overheating. So, especially with the stinger, you can overheat your you can overheat your gun, and that can cause a fire, and that can hurt you, and that can kill you. And if you do it too often, you'll have to pay for a respawn. But all these things are improved over time. We'll see with the equipment stuff, like eventually, what all these things improve over time. There we go. We got another panel. Oh, I missed a I missed a light there. All right. Almost there. Almost there. It's a little bits floating in space too. There we go. That'll get it. Now he mentioned what we what Weaver mentioned before is there can be stuff inside the ship. I don't know if there's any here. Normally it's on these plates on the wall. But like sometimes there'll be oxygen, sometimes there'll be fuel, sometimes there'll be repair kits. 
and uh, it'll tell us later, like, oh, you shouldn't do that, but, you know. Nuts to you, company. All right, let's try and make our way back and not suffocate. You also you also get the opportunity uh, later on. I will also buy some fuel. There we go. You get the opportunity later on to upgrade your equipment so you have more oxygen for longer, so you don't have to go back to the thing as much. Stuff like that, you know? Um, let's cut the doors out. Ah! Oh, 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 there we go, okay. Good! All right, there we go. There we go. Now let's get some of the other stuff in here. See, there's there's chairs in here. This is the this is the bridge essentially. There's chairs in here. There's computers. There's storage. All of these are barge items, as you can see on uh, just above the item when I pull it out of there. Oh, nice. Okay, so we got level three. So everything else left in here is cake, basically. Since we have a minute something left, uh, what we're gonna do, I don't know if we can, this might be too heavy to, to get going, yeah. Later on with tethers, we can, we can chop this up a little, or we can move this a little, a little better. I think I think actually this might be easier to move. So let's yeah, let's see if we can just get this over there. We'll start it going that way. And while we're doing that, we can pull out some other stuff. Maybe, I don't know. Pull out some of the storage units. Let's get as much as we can out of here actually. It's tough without tethers, but at least we hit the, the level three of the value. Got that. Did pretty good, I think. Considering. All right. Let's see if we can get this over. To oh, no, I went in. Anyway, that's what it looks like. Let's see if we can get, I don't think we're going to get it over there in 20 seconds, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, maybe. Half of that is like furnace and half of it is processor, but that's the best, that's the easiest thing there. All right. Good, good, good. So. Your end of day summary, we salvaged 1.5 million, we had 125,000 remaining, and we destroyed uh, 141,000 that, you know, we didn't allocate to the right place. So structure aluminum that I sent to the wrong place, like good because I didn't rip up the main cabin and all that stuff. But uh, what we did make was we got a couple antennas, a couple nacelles, uh, the storage bins were good money. The Nanocarbon, the outside part of the ship that we can't cut. Uh, titanium panels, you know, we got a little bit out of that. More nanocarbon. The crates were worth a, a few bucks. Uh, and the the door the door console, that's good. I had five of those, and they're worth one hundred and twenty thousand. So uh, we gain mastery points to up our rank. Once we get to rank four, then we can do the as it was said in the the main menu, the limited lives thing. So let's just end our shift. All right.
All right, let's wake up. And so we earn some money, but every single day we have to pay interest on our loan that they voiced it upon us. Uh, we have to pay for the bay. We have to pay for transport we, for, of the salvage that we're doing. We have to pay for our tools to rent because we don't own them. We have to pay for our hab rental. So the cutter, the cutting tool costs us, the, between the cutting, cutter and the grappler, they cost us $210,000 every day. So that's big money. Or sorry, uh, yeah, $210,000 every single day. Hab rent, utility, living in the hab is cheaper than the cutting tools, but we wouldn't be here if we weren't doing that. The helmet we have to pay for, scanner, suit, and thruster. So we have to pay rent for everything. <sighs> Such a scam. All right. So let's go take a look at our equipment. Let's go to the workstation here. So our equipment, uh, oh, it's just showing us stickers at the moment. I guess we can't work on equipment yet. Does it just want us to start the shift? Okay, we'll just go get another ship then. Uh, let's view the ship. We're not gonna do the same one. Let's start with the new one because there'll be more value there. Uh, let's do a station hopper this time. All right. So to begin with, it's like, oh, hold on. So they're, I think they're they're working on that whole portion of it. Like they they've got the base game in there now, uh, but they're working on the the story portion of it, which is pretty cool. I I I look forward to see where that goes. There's some elements so far that we'll encounter in uh, in the current iteration of it, and they just added a new act uh, in the in the latest update. So obviously it is early access. So there's going to be changes. You may lose your progress, that kind of thing. But uh, it's it's pretty neat the work that they're doing on it. All right, so we got the floors, and I think the we got the floors and the ceiling sort of unhinged here. Let's uh let's get those over there. The beginning ships are very similar because it's gonna it's sort of giving you what I uh, giving you giving you a chance to get your uh your tactic or your the way you do things settled, I've obviously played this quite a bit, so um, not that I'm the best at it, but I at least have, I have um, ways that I do about, do stuff. But a cool part is, I mean, I've watched, I've watched other uh, players in the game and they always, you always see something that they do a little differently than you, which is kind of cool. It's like nobody, not everybody does everything exactly the same way, at least that, not that I've seen. There's like some variance there, which is pretty cool. All right. All right, let's do that.
Also, we don't have we don't have some of the cool stuff yet, like uh, electrical systems and reactors and some of the stuff that can really cause you issues. This panel. Oh, I didn't notice, but this is actually a Lynx rail ship. That's kind of cool. Like like the one that that we saw in the intro. Uh this is this is one of those tra uh transport ships. All right, there we go. There we go. Oh, got an antenna there. Happens a lot where I notice I'm moving a piece and I notice something I missed on it. That's uh, not a component of it. Or it not not that it's not a component, but it, it goes to a different area, you know. All right, there we go. All right, let's start getting some of this stuff down here. And it's all a lot of it too is efficiency. It's uh what's what's worth your time, right? Cuz you can spend they give you a 15 minute shift and you can come back but it costs you another day's day's rent and stuff like that, right? Like that's the punitive point. Is yes, if you have later on especially when the ships are big enough. All right, let's see if there's I don't think there's any uh I don't think there's any other supplies on the ship yet so let's let's head over to the kiosk get some oxygen relying upon your jets at this point is just kind of slow all right let's get some oxygen ah there we go good There we go. Come on. I don't know why you're jammed in there. There we go. Let's get that realigned. There we go. Good. Ooh. See, they started to have some uh, electrical issues there with the with this guy, one of the door panels or door the door opening thingies. Uh, don't want to do that. All right, let's get this out. There we go. As long as it's sort of headed in the right direction, usually it'll get there. Sometimes you'll find that it gets hooked on that middle wall between the processor and the and the uh, furnace, and it goes in the wrong one, which is not not usually intended. But you know, say Libby. Perfection is difficult in this game, I would say. Perfection is not usually the goal; it's efficiency. If you're playing the race mode, perfection is more of a more of something that you're looking to do because you want you want to get maximum results. But in your day to day in the game, don't sweat the small stuff. There we go, good.
All right. What do we got? What else do we got? The door can come out. I think that's a processor item. Yeah. Okay. This is also a processor item. Good. There we go. And I think these can go. You don't need much sometimes, just an edge. So I give it a push. That's going a little too low, I think. So we give it a pull up. Oh, I forgot the lights on there. At least I got one. I always forget about the lights. There we go. We hit number two. Good. All right, let's get this over there. Get it rolling. Okay, good, 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 good. Our fuel and, all right, we got this side to do. Get that up, all right. Oh, we got the door handle. And this we need to send down. I'm probably not going to get that door handle, but we'll give it a check. You don't want to end up in the processor either, so be careful. Just bump that a little bit. There we go. Should be going in the right direction. You can see what we have left of the ship here. Still got about five minutes left. We're going to have to go get some O2 and fuel, though. Get that rolling. All right, what else can we do here? There we go. What do we got in here? We got a seat and some storage units. I think those storage units were worth a good a good buck, so Let's get those out of there. Also, like the floor lights and everything, you can turn those in too. I'm just going for the major stuff. There we go. We hit number three again. Good. I find that far more difficult later on to get to the third, especially the bigger ships. All right, we're running low on, we're running low on oxygen. So let's let's go do that quick. See if we can grab onto anything. There you go. All right, let's grab some fuel and some oxygen. All right, let's see what else we got in here. I've yet to find a good way to like cut these things up and separate them. I don't know, it's maybe something else that uh, another person that plays the game could could help with because like until until you can cut up the because you can cut you can cut these walls and so on but you can't cut like the big these things here you can't cut those so you can do this right you can pack that up uh but you can't you can't uh just cut it up into big pieces even this is like nanocarbon so you can't cut that up either at least not easily uh, the glass is also cuttable, so let's uh, see if we can just do that quick while it's shifting on us. Another thing you can do, I tend to use the brake a lot, but it costs fuel to do that. You can also stable yourself by holding on to something. So like you can you can just grab on like that if you want to. 
So let's pop that into the furnace. I don't know. Let's. We got time, so let's uh get some lights out of here. Now again, like you could, I could try and cut up the floor. Oh, we got that too. Let's get the good stuff out of here. Barge stuff is always the money. So I don't know. And sometimes it like you're gonna sacrifice obviously a, a pro like profit for trying to figure stuff out sometimes, but see like notice how it's it's uh it's nanocarbon there, right? So let's let's cut the door open. So we have a little more access here. Oh, that was a little much. Always watch your uh Oh, like I'm just doing it rapidly, but your cutter will so tell you what it's going to cut, right? So let's try and get this out. Ah! I don't know if it'll fit out the door. There we go. So that uh, that's furnace. Yeah, I'm going to run out of time. That's okay. I was just trying stuff. At least you can hack up the floor. Uh I lost myself there a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. All right, so let's check on how we did. We we got over the third uh, the third marker, so we got uh, seventy five um, LT. I forget what those are. The oh yeah, links tokens. Seventy five links tokens. I think that's to spend on equipment, and then we have our pro progress. Are two different things. But we were able to salvage 1.3 million out of it. So 83% of the salvage we got. And again, you can review like what was worth money because then you know what to target, right? Again, the storage bins were worth almost $100,000 for just the four of them. But you have an equivalent value for a couple of airlock consoles. So it's... Uh... Oh, there we go. Nice. Very good. That means we can do another... I, I think it, we'll, we'll see if we can take a look at the progression. Because that's also uh, part of the game. Let's take a look more in the hab if we can. Oh, morning. Yes. Hmm. Profitability for who? Hazard level three. Congratulations, you are now qualified to handle electrical hazards during salvage. Woo! That's exciting. Due to regulatory regulatory rollbacks introduced in 2299, Link Salvage does not do a preliminary exam of ships to disconnect potential electrical hazards. Yeah. Basically, they don't have to worry about it. Ooh, that's kind of cool. But I've seen these before, but like you got more stuff. Again, we pay our or $525,000 to start the day. So... We earned 1.3 million. We pay another half mil. Link salvage. All right, let's take out our terminal. Is this where we messages? Okay. Structure module. Uh, what's unread? Unread. Employee financial relief program. Everything important and good in this world comes with a price, of course. Each privileged person who joins our family to become a shipbreaker comes with significant costs. Fortunately, 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 Lynx shoulders the burden. Oh, just so altruistic of these costs temporarily in order to let you hit the ground running and begin training. They're so nice. They temporarily burden, take the burden of all the stuff they charge us with. Anyways, enough of them. Certification. This is fun times. Okay, so we're here. Next, uh, we get to novice, and then we have javelin type ships. So we've been working on mackerels. Then there's javelins and geckos, and so on and so forth. But like all of these, you see, like the progression shows you what we so far. We have uh, ship two grade two certification. Now we have ship grade three. 
uh, the Macro Exo Lab unlock. So that's the ship we just saw. But also Grapple Tether Module unlocked. Oh, goodness. Goodness. So let's go take a look at our equipment at our workstation. Can we uh, take a look at equipment? Equipment? Yeah. Okay. Let's look at our uh, utility grappler and unlock tether. So we have 390 of those LT things, the links tokens. So again, you have to pay links tokens to upgrade things and make things like not cost money. Anyway, so let's whoop. There we go. An enhance, an enhancement to the standard handheld utility grapple. The contiguous Van Vanderwell's tether field system, or tethers, reduces the need for multiple shipbreakers to move a single heavy object. A, a versatile tool in the hands of skilled workers, the introduction of tethers led to the second greatest increase in salvaging efficiency in Link's history. Only losing out to Real protein breakfast meal discounted in 2262. Very nice. Tethers are easy and intuitive to use. Press and hold your grab. Okay. Well, well, we'll just I'll just show you. But we have we have uh, links tokens to work with now. Um, grapple license. Okay. Do we have anything else we can improve? Cutter. Nope. Okay. Back. Thrusters. Not until seven. Scanner. Nope. Okay. Helmet. Nope. Work suit? Not until six. Demo charges we don't get until 11. Okay. Seven repair kits available. Everything's 100%. So this is when you start working with the depletion of, you know, uh, durability and so on. So let's start our shift. Let's do another ship. So let's view the work, the ship catalog. I could go back and finish the ship I'm doing, but since it was like 1.8 million or something, and I already got 1.3, it would cost me another 500,000 just to work the day. So I'm better off just going to get a new ship. So we have, do we have an Exolab? We have two of them. One of them is worth 3.2. Yeah, they're both worth about the same. The electrical hazard is much lower in this one. So let's take it. The down in the bottom, the bottom right there, like if you saw there was like percentages of whatever kind of hazard. So we took the, the one with the lower percentage there. All right. Yeah, man. There we go. Still not pressurized, so we don't have to worry about that. Good. Uh, I think these just pop off. All right, so here's where tethers are fun. You can extend a tether from the item down to the place you want it, and it'll pull it together. The tethers are like an elastic band, basically one end to the other, and it'll go whoosh. So it'll pull it into wherever you, wherever you set it, which is great. All right. Oh, out of range. My cutter's not that. I don't have that much distance on my cutter, which will happen again. Part of the upgrades is. Things can work further. Things work more efficiently. Things overheat less, you know, as you upgrade your tools. So I don't even have to pull. The cool thing is, is I don't I don't even have to pull this off like I did. So I could use my grapple to pull it off or the tethers will do it for me. So watch it's doing the sort of doing the initial pull and then yoink. Tethers are fantastic. All right. Since this is a, a, a lab ship, there's tons of monitors and computers and all sorts of things. So let's do our usual cutting off of the floors. Be careful not to cut computers, that's important. And I wonder if this ship is worth so much because now we're gonna have to deal with reactors and electrical systems. So you'll notice too, like when I go to a cut point like I just did, it kind of looks like I'm cutting something in front of me. It matters where the line is. See, see the line extends there so you see the the red dot 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 that means it's going to cut into this bar but if i have it just here it's just going to cut that piece and this piece right i didn't mean for that to happen but 
anywhere it extends, it'll cut. So if you just want it to be that one area, then it'll just cut that. And it also will only cut uh, items that can be sliced up. Like I can't do, I can't do infrastructure, but I can do these these bars here. So I can't do the back panel, but I could do the side panels. And that's usually, I mean, usually the way you look at it, I don't know, it's not 100%, but see how it's a processor for the nanocarbon and here it's furnace. Usually you can cut furnace stuff. All right. Again, try not to cut important things. There we go. All right. And the benefit of tethers is instead of doing the pushing, I can just do this. And guess what? When I need more tethers, I have to go buy them. Exciting, eh? Links. They'll charge you for everything. Absolutely everything. It's a racket, but it's a fun racket because it's just a video game. All right, let's get this door out here. We'll get the light, uh, pull the light off here for a second. All right. Oh, I forgot to pull the light off of here. That's okay. I'm starting to get used to that because I didn't do it so much. I'll wait till my oxygen's a little lower to do that. For now, I, I'm just gonna. For now, I'm just gonna do some of this stuff. Which opening up the top and the bottom lets me just do this. Now the electrical stuff is gonna have issues if you, when you're pulling it off, you'll notice sparks fly, and that's gonna happen over here a little bit. So let's get this out. Oh. Got it out quick enough that it didn't start to cause like electrical field problems. Because it, it'll cause electrical issues and stuff will jump around and it'll be hazardous for you to be in there. But it'll also damage the equipment. So you got to be careful about how quick you're doing things and all that business. Well, that might... Oh, okay. We're good. I don't know what that... I don't, I don't. Hold on. Hold on. Are you okay? I don't know. It's it maybe damaged. I don't know. Let's let's go get our get our oxygen and also get some more tethers. Yep, I know. I know. And again, like you'll you'll be able to upgrade the amount of tethers that you have in your storage and all that stuff. So let's get some oxygen. Let's get some more tethers. So like like anything. The more efficient you are, you are with your supplies and so on, uh, the longer you can go without having to spend money. But uh, you're, it's pretty much a racket from Lynx. They paint it like this wonderful, perfect corporation, but my goodness, it is not. They take advantage of you at every single instance. Like even the... Oh, because of regulations, we didn't have to pre-check the, the ships for safety. Nah, why would we do that? That would take time and money. We'll just, you know, let you do it. All right. We got a couple more monitors. You'll notice too that we're like, we've just done mostly the inside stuff and we're almost at number two. So that's a lot of the value has been found within uh, these components here. Let's do that and then just pop that over there.
All right. We got a junction box. There you go. See see the electrical stuff going on now? It's like jumping between metal objects and it's it's a danger to us. But it's also going to ruin the equipment. So, we want to get it out of there as fast as we can. The me the metal stuff anyway. I'm not too worried about the storage bins. There we go. We hit goal number two. Nice. Oop. All right. Another cool thing about... Oh, that's just a door panel. Another cool thing is you could find, like... You can find um, leftover data drives in here. Now, let's do this from the outside. That's not going to go well. Uh, sometimes you could rotate... Oh boy. When something gets sideways like that, sometimes it's hard to pull it out the door without hacking up the door, obviously. Bump it around a bit, and hopefully, we loosen it up. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. There we go, good. All right, let's get this separated. Push that away a little. No, it's it's attached inside. Um Oh shoot. I got rid of the door handle here. All right. So here's electrical systems. See the wiring and everything? So it's going to be a little different. One of the cool I don't know if I can do this the same way as I saw the other cutter do. But like he just touched the edge of it with his cutting tool. Now this one he he did. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, and it loosens the battery. I'll cut this as normal. Just go up and do the side. See the cuts, the junctions are all along too. This is where it's going to get a little more intricate than what we've we've looked at in the past. Is there's. These these junctions are now holding these panels together. Oh god! Oh goodness! <laughs> we gotta. While I'm working on this, my oxygen is running out. That's uh, it's not good. All right, let's get out of here. If we can. Can we? All right. So since we got all that uh, separated, let's do this before we have to go get oxygen. Normally I like to use my tethers if I can, but sometimes it's just not possible. All right. Let's go get some O2 before I run out. Ooh, we're getting low. Normally, I'd like to get 
tethers and what or wait to use up my tethers and that's an example of not being efficient right so i had to pay for five tethers but it's the same cost as buying 10 if i use them all because links all right let's get this uh let's get this over here and you can stack up tethers to move it move bigger items or move it faster like it's it's not necessarily just uh you don't have to use just one and then be like, why is it going so slow, you know? All right. So let's get the other side going with the last two minutes that we have. As you can see, the more complexity we have, the longer it takes to do things. Hence why uh, the race mode is so interesting because uh, people get really good at cutting these things up quick. get that in there i'd like to at least get to level three in the last minute 32 so um what we may need to do what we may need to do is if this whole side is dislodged let's see if we can just pull the whole side yep the whole side is going so i'll lose the benefit of all the the lights and stuff salvaging those in the proper place but but i'm losing time so i want to get the bigger portion of it which is the oh i didn't know you could pull those uh, pull those off okay maybe the ones with the uh... i thought you had to cut those learn something new every day we're just going to pull this whole thing over to the furnace There we go. Last 20 seconds, that's what we'll do. And then we'll see if we can propel this towards the processor in the last 18. So get what we can, basically. See if they both made it in. Ah! Well, we got what we could. So we got 87.5% of the ship is good enough for uh, level three. Uh, we we had 366,000 remaining. It's probably the stuff that didn't make it in by the time, you know, we got there. But, you know, tried. We tried. All right. Oh, we had five. Good. Very good. And we got some extra links tokens. So let's see about, let's go check the equipment just for a second. Oh, javelins, tank, javelin tank are small. Okay. Robust build. Okay, so we have access to mackerel heavy cargo now, too. Sweet. All right, so we got salvage income of 2.8. Cost us another 5.25 mil, as per usual. The It went down a little bit because of our interest is lower because we made some money. But uh, let's go check out our equipment. Workstation. There we go. All right, so all of our stuff is fine, but we have... Increased range on our cutter. Uh, increased range on our grapple. Thrusters, nothing yet. Uh, object scan mode, let's do that, yeah. Good. That'll help our scanner. So the, the vi this, this visor mode connects to a, a remote neural network to perform a gestalt analysis and determine what is being viewed. Provides relevant information from the Lynx component catalog. Very good. Okay. Uh, helmet, nothing yet. Work suit, okay. And we also have a bunch of repair kits available when things start to degrade. Okay.
I think that's it for today. I'm going to go have lunch because I am hungry. But, uh, you know, if you were with me, I appreciate it. I hope you have a good one. And I'll uh, see you next time for some more Shipbreaker. Have a good day.